My thing with Snoop or Dre or anybody that I work with is I just want them to look good. I, I just want whatever I do for them is going to be able to, for them to take it and make them look good. And it, and it did something for them because I want them to, to, be, to, to be able to go into any situation they go to and know that, hey, when you fuck with Snoop Dogg, you fuck with his team and his team is, is deep. You know what I mean? And we can do anything. Everybody. Sorry, that, that Ric Flair woo really gets everybody. Yeah, that's out here. This is your boy, my one, here at Dash Radio on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today we got one of LA's staples, somebody that's architect of the sound. I'm going to give you all your flowers, dog. Someone I've looked up to for a long time, to the point where like when this came in over the weekend, I was like, yes, yes, and yes. Wow. Fred motherfucking wreck. Thank How you, man. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me, bro. bro I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you for coming in, man. We were. I was super excited because I have been, I come from Middle Eastern descent. So the second, I don't know when it was, I picked up that you were Middle Eastern or had that descent. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, it's one of my favorite cats. Oh, there's one of us up there. You know? I can do it too. And and you're responsible for one of my favorite, you know, West Coast tracks that consider this an invitation to my ah, and Nate. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Like you have been, man, you, you have man. been putting in your work since shit, if I'm correct, 98, 99, since you've been like a little working. bit before that, but that's when it started to pick up, you know okay. what I mean? Because if, if, if my research is, well, we're going to get into the things you're working on now, too, but I want to dive in a little bit into, like, so people know that you've really been grinding this motherfucker. Yeah. If I'm correct, you were a and ring projects as early as, like, 98, 99? Like, uh, I think 96 or 7, I think that was. 97 or something like that. I read, like, Mary, Aaliyah. Yeah. Um, what were you, if you don't mind me asking, what was your involvement on these projects? Well, I, I, for, I worked on, on the radio first, and then from the radio, I had, um, uh, I DJed on the radio, and on the, that was only on the weekend, so during the weekday, one of the uh, people that worked at MCA Records asked me to um, come up there and, like, do radio promotions, call DJs and do stuff like that, you know what I mean? So I went up there, and I did it, and then, because I didn't have nothing to do all week, so I was like, this is cool, I get to hang out in the record label all day and learn how the record label works. Yeah. So my so at that time my boss was um uh, a guy named Brian Sampson. He still does uh, radio promotions now. And then our boss got fired, and then a new guy came in, and his name was Hank Shockley from the Bomb Squad, and he Ooh. produced. He was one of my favorite producers. So he was yeah. my boss, and then he made me A and R up there, and then I started you know A and R and whatever projects he would and, dish out to me during that I time. Because I feel like the the role of it A and R has changed throughout the times a little bit back yeah. then were you helping the artists get with their producers were you overseeing what made the projects it was uh it was a little bit of both depending on the artist you know what i mean some of it was like finding songs from writers and producers and getting them to different artists like oh this beat i got from so and so was cool let me send it over to whoever yeah some of it was just like I mean, like, Mary J was working on her album, but she didn't need us to a and our, our, My a and our job was like, okay, make sure the samples are cleared, make sure the studio time is booked, make sure that uh, you get the credits and, you know, stuff like that. So it depended on the Depending on the artist and the project and who their team was, you know what I mean? Okay, okay. Um, it would be like, like one of my artists was immature, like the kids group. So it was like Chris Stokes was there, everything. So I, didn't, I just made, had to make sure he turned in the invoices and make sure he got paid. Yeah, you yeah. did, and you were less hands-on. Yeah, so, but other things, I would have to, you know, go find beats and, you know, go, go in the studio and get them in there and, 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 and you know, just do what an A&R person does. Like, I don't know what an A&R person does now, but... Well, I feel like it, you, the music's changed, the way, the way we consume music. You know, things have changed now. Like, every, like you got to make 12-second videos. Like, so much has changed in the music industry, so I feel like that role has changed. Yeah. What, were, what, what Mary Project was that? What's the... 411? Uh, man, I don't even remember the name of it. Yeah, I think it might have been her sophomore project around yeah. that time, maybe. But either way, one of my favorite things I saw was that you got to work on the Dangerous Mind soundtrack. Yeah, that was like probably maybe one of the first soundtracks I worked on. And, and one, actually, I'm not capping, my favorite record on there is It's All Right, Craig Max. It's, 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 it's All Right, mm -hmm. if you feel that. Like, I love, I yeah. love Craig Mack. That's cool, man. He's one of the most unique, little quick Craig Mack, rest in peace. One of the most unique rappers we ever had. I 
forgot it. I forgot that he was even on that, so I can put that in my credits that I wrote yeah. with Craig Mack. He did all the verse. No, Missy did a verse too. But yeah, Mac Missy was called Sister back then, so yeah. it was Sister and Craig Mack. Yeah. And then you did the remix, right? I did the remix, yeah, because that was another thing while I was up there. If I was like, I was still trying to, you know, I was still producing too, so that was a good place for me to be like, well, hey, this record right here needs a remix, man. You know, I would just do it, and if yeah. my boss liked it, and they would just put it out. You know what I mean? Wow, and, and that. The, Sorry, the, the lady that did all the soundtracks up there, her name was Kathy Nelson. She's like the most famous soundtrack person ever in history. Like she did all Kathy the great Nelson? sound. Yeah, Kathy Shout Nelson. Kathy. She did all the great soundtracks. So she was like, she was the person behind all that stuff. And she's worked with everybody from Quentin Tarantino to Jerry Brockheimer. She's done all the great soundtracks. Wow. So she was like somebody that took me under her wing and was like, hey, help me work on these soundtracks. So that was how I got to work on that. And then fast forward, what I thought was really beautiful, because that, that to me was kind of the beginning of your career, at least like professionally. In music, yeah. Which I might be wrong, because I didn't know about your radio days. Uh, yeah, but yeah, that was pretty much like when I entered the music business, it was okay. like, but before that, I worked on, on the radio with the Wake Up Show with Swain, King Tech, and we would do remixes and stuff there too, but it wasn't uh, until I, after that. Well, that I so started taking that, it more serious, you know. Yeah, this past year, if it's this year or the year prior, you won an award for your work on the, the Mamba documentary. Yeah, right? you won an Emmy Award for that, yeah. Amazing, man, to go from, like, like, you know, getting a remix off on a movie soundtrack to winning an Emmy. Uh, you, I mean, uh, uh, the list of things you've done, but I really thought that was Yeah, cool. it's a blessing, you know. That was all Dr. Dre's work, so, you know, I just was happy to be there to help him out and make sure that, well, he got his vision out there. Well, doesn't Dre like love doing movies and movie scores and stuff? Dre loves doing anything that's like creative and, and that's that's original and good. You know what I mean? Mm. I feel like that's the key with Dre is he just knows when something's good or bad. There's like a black line. He definitely does. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we got man. There's so much I can ask you about. We could be like, if I had the Nori in a FN show, Drink Champs. We'd have three bottles of tequila. We would start with. We wouldn't get that far. We would get into everything, man. But um, one of the things I wanted to, I, I've been saying this for years now. I feel like Snoop Dogg is the most underappreciated hip hop act ever, just because I feel like he is the most well known. But I also think he's so underappreciated for how much he does for others. Like I didn't know until two years ago that he wrote Warren G's debut album but never took the credit for it because he didn't want Suge Knight to take the money. Mm, that makes sense. I, don't, I didn't know that, but I mean, I was just with him yesterday and I was telling him, uh, and I tell this to everybody, I'm like, you know, Snoop Dogg, you're the greatest rap star ever in history. And he just kind of looked up at me and he was like, I'm like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, you are the greatest rap, not rapper, rap star ever in history absolutely you know what i mean there's nobody that's a bigger rap star mm -hmm. and when i say star i mean not just on record i'm talking about records television movies drinks uh, uh weed and you name it he's the bi biggest rap star ever yeah. in history you know what i mean and I don't, it's going to be hard to top globally like any country dude Anywhere you go, you know Snoop Dogg. Jay-Z could walk in some places, and you, they wouldn't probably know who he is. True. Snoop Dogg can't walk around. Snoop Dogg would be like Michael Jackson walking around. Yeah, yeah, Because he's just Snoop Dogg, you know? Absolutely, man. Well, I've, worked, I've worked in this industry now. I've been blessed enough, like, eight years on and off. And my mom was never proud of anything I did until she saw a picture of me with Snoop. <laughs> my mom, you know us, you know Middle Eastern moms. My mom's disgusted that I took this job uh, in this industry. Oh, my mom loves Snoop Dogg, man. Every time I'm on FaceTime, he's like, let me talk to your mom. And they, I, she, my mom will take the phone and she'll go off in another room and start talking to him. Yeah, my mom Showing loves, mom, Snoop everybody Snoop. loves Snoop Dogg. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves him Everybody, Snoop Dogg. And, that, and I, I feel like that, that's part of what goes into him being so underappreciated is I think people overlook him now because he's done so much great shit, but it's like, bro, he's, to, since doggy style, he's never fell off, really. He's still hitting Billboard. Like, he's still charting to this day. Yeah, and he's on, like, I was, there was, there was this old Mexican lady the other day where, when we were together, and she was like, Snoop Dogg, I like, really like the Banda music you did with some Banda group that he did. I was like, you did a Banda song? He's like, yeah, cuz, I did a Banda song. <laughs> I'm like, 
there's nothing that he can't do. He's done every type of music. He never can fail. He's he he does he did country, he did reggae, he did gospel, he did rap, he did rock, he did he done every banda, Mexican music, he done Egyptian music, Arabic music, he's done everything. I the see him do Bollywood. We call him the machine. He's yeah. probably he has to have done Bollywood. Yeah, he, for, has, yeah, he does. It. Okay, he did Bollywood. He did Korean music. He's done everything. Yeah. He's he, we we call man. him the machine. He yeah. is the hardest working man in show business. Like James Brown was the hardest man working in show business, but Snoop Dogg completely took that crown. Absolutely. Man, now, he's one of the funnest and greatest to work with. And I'm, I'm, I like, if I could just work with Snoop Dogg every day, like, I'm good. Yeah, you, you would be happy I mean? just yeah, doing that. Yeah, because he's just the funnest. He's like the, it's like you, whenever you have an opportunity just to be in the same room with him, even if we're not doing music or anything, you just want to go and go over there and be over there because. His energy is just so fun, and just it's just so much love from him. And yeah, you know, you can see it. he's so funny. It's like you just waiting for them. Your face is gonna hurt walking out of there. Every him. time he walks into a room when I'm there, because us here at Dash work with him very closely, so we'll help him produce different shows or sets he's doing. Uh, second he walks in the room, the air is gone. You know what I mean? He sucks all the air. I'm not by intention. It's just him. Yeah. His stature now. Yeah. And yeah, I've never seen him be rude to any. I mean, I, I've seen him be short to some people, but like. Snoop, you know what I mean? Um, but anyway, I, I had to give him his flowers, and I wanted to ask you if being around Snoop, I know recently I saw he announced Legion of Boom about a year ago, mm -hmm. which was just so many people in that motherfucker. Yourself, Battle Cat, uh, fuck, I can't even remember who else is in uh, there. Superfly. Superfly. High Tech. High Tech. All the OGs. DJ Pooh, um, Amplified, um, uh, um, I can't even remember everybody, man. But shout out to the Legion of Boom. You know. Shout out to the to y'all. I was gonna say, being around Snoop, does it motivate you? Because you've you've done a lot, Fred. You could you could honestly retire if you wanted to, right? But does being around Snoop give you that like, nah, I gotta go harder. I gotta go harder. Yeah, because he's still doing stuff, so you want to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's always doing some. I mean, you know. A few years ago, he was like, hey, man, you want to do a cooking show with me? I was like, a cooking show? No, I ain't trying to do no damn cooking show. And now we're on the Martha Stewart show together. So I now, we, yeah, now we hang out with Martha. I can talk to Martha Stewart every day. Yeah. Like, like where does that, you know, how could you want to stop the ball from rolling? You know what I mean? It's like all these new things come up and that are so great and so, and so fun that, you know, you just. And he's always plugging everybody in. And he's always plugging everybody in, but you gotta come, you know, you gotta step to the to to the table. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just show up with some bullshit. Mm -hmm. And it, it's it's always challenging because you want to you want my thing with Snoop or Dre or anybody that I work with is I just want them to look good. I I just want whatever I do for them is gonna be able to for them to take it and make them look good. And it and it did something for them because I want them to. To be, to, to be able to go into any situation they go to and know that, hey, when you fuck with Snoop Dogg, you fuck with his team, and his team is, is deep. You know what I mean? And we can do anything. Yeah. So that's how it is. Even with Dre, the same thing. Like, whenever we are working on something together, I always try to give those guys my all because I want them to shine. Like, it's not even about me. I don't even care. I'm like, I like being behind the scenes. I don't like being out in public. I'm not like, you don't see me being out like DJ Khaled and all these dudes or whoever, you know. Like, yeah, yeah because I just like my position that I play and I want them to shine at all times because they're my heroes and they're my brothers and I just, you when know. When you have played such a huge role, I'm sure you're aware of it. I don't know if you, have, have you taken a step back yet and reflected on your career, like giving yourself a pat on the back yet? Or are you still in that? Nah, because I always feel like I haven't done anything yet. That's so. <laughs> crazy. That's I just keep trying. Man, from Gangsta Nation to Get Your Walk On to... I mean, we could literally, like I said, this could be all about reminiscing about what DJ Fred Rec, I should say, you know what I mean, is done. But you've definitely done it. You deserve your flowers. Thank you. And I think it's beautiful that I actually, if I was to, if I, if I had the opportunity to be, you know, what I'm going to say is a super producer like yourself, I would want to be in the background too. Because I feel like you probably get the most stress-free life. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can go to restaurants. Like nobody's doing enough foods. to me. Yeah. Oh, I can go anywhere. Nobody's rushing. I can go. I can go. I can even go on my Instagram or my Twitter, and it's still like accessible, or you know, where it's like, I, I can read it in happiness without you know. I'm, I I can't imagine like Snoop has like 80 million followers. Like, how can you even go through your Instagram and look mm, to see yeah. if somebody liked something? Half of the yeah. 90 percent of it, not 90 percent, but like 
a bunch of it is, would be like junk and just like people making all sorts of random comments. Of course, trolling. at least with my, I can still have a somewhat normal existence with it. Was this I mean? a decision you made? Because I feel like in the, I want to say like mid two, like 2003 to 10, you could have, if you wanted to, like branded yourself hard. And you know what I mean? I'm not going to name anybody, but there's people who did that, DJs and producers who yeah. said, I want to be in front of the camera. Yeah. I'm building a name for myself. It wasn't ever my, uh, it was never my thing. Like, even when I was doing like Martha Stewart show or doing stuff on TV or even doing this interview, it's like I had to like build myself up to do it. And really, like, okay, I gotta, like, I gotta, I gotta go there for this job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But outside of that, I'm not trying to do that. Yeah, you've you know? never been. You've always been so low key. It's just like I don't know. I just don't like the attention. I guess. No, like I'm that, the same you know? way. I have a Whole Foods theory where if I can't go to any Whole Foods in America or Target, it used to be Target, but now anyway, if I can't go to a major retailer and be at peace, I don't want it. Yeah. You know, I look at the Neptunes. There's Pharrell, there's Chad, and there's Shea Haley. Most people don't know who the fuck Shea Haley is. I never is. even heard of Shea Haley. By design. Dude purposely doesn't want fame at all. Yeah. He's part of NERD, and I heard he still works with a lot of, like, on a lot of the Neptune stuff. Openly is like, I don't want it. Don't yeah. put me in the spotlight. It's cool. I'm fine. I'm happy to where it is, man. Well, man, as, a, as an observer, I've, uh, it, as a deep hip-hop historian, it was when Gangsta Nation came out, I had to look up as a kid before we have Wikipedia and all that. Who the fuck made this beat? Uh -huh. And that's where I looked up, and I've always been a fan since. And Thank I want to give you a gift. I gift everybody an album from normally my CD collection. And I wanted to give you Dangerous Minds, but I didn't because I saw you did the remix. And yeah, it's all right. right. And I'm like, oh, I said, I'm a dick. I'm going to give them this. And, but I think I got something better. So I'm going to let you open this up. This is a CD. I think it's limited edition. Very rare. You're gonna have to explain to me what it is. From one of my favorite stores, a one of your one of your favorite stores, one of your favorite artists. Oh wow, wow! This is it right here. This I, is my, this might be my favorite uh, CD of hers. You found this over there? I looked it up. I, I I first looked up her best her critically acclaimed best album, which was this. Yeah, they had it underneath in the Iran section. Wow. Which was so racist. I wanted to hit them like, y'all racist motherfuckers. Nah, that's cool. It was close enough. <laughs> yeah, it was close. Fayrouz, man. Well, Fayrouz is uh, one of them. This is like what my mother used to listen to in the morning. Mm -hmm. Any Middle Eastern mother listens to this. But tell me you're not listening to that in the morning. Oh, I listen to this now all the time. You yeah. Know? I, I, I didn't... When I was a kid, I didn't used to like to listen to Arabic music because my mom and dad used to play it all the time, and it was like... When you're a kid, you're like, man, I want to hear Michael Jackson, and I want to hear, like, Marvin Gaye and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't want to hear this. My dad used to have an eight-track player, and, and he used to play uh, this. Not to, my dad didn't play Fayrouz too much. My dad was a fan of some other Arabic singers, like Farid Al-Atrash and people like that. And he used to play that stuff, and I used to hate it. But when, as I grew older, I started finding myself, in the morning time when I make my coffee, I play this. You know what I'm saying? In the evening time, you play something else. Yeah. So this is like, this is dope, man. I appreciate of this, course, man. man. This is like a great, this is like one of her most famous CDs, Fayrouz. Um, and it's about songs about Jerusalem that she wrote. Wow. Because she's never been able to see it. She lives in Lebanon. She's not allowed to go to Jerusalem. Wow. Because the Israelis won't let her go. Is she Palestinian? No, or she's she Lebanese. Lebanese, okay. Yeah. So this is her like tribute to a land and the people that she never got to visit and see. Yeah, you know? that's a beautiful thing, man. So this is beautiful, man. I man, appreciate that. Of course, that is for you to keep, man, here. And she's still alive. She's one of the last divas that's That's one of the craziest alive. things. She's been recording. This, Fayrouz has been releasing music since 57. Yeah, her, hu her husband, her, her, she was uh, produced by a brother, two brothers, and then she married one of the brothers. And uh, uh, he, they did all her music. Rahbani brothers, they were in name. Wow. I gotta ch check it out. I never heard it. Oh, but I, I, you know, I had to. Do she got my... so many records. Like her records are incredible. Bro, bro. she put out albums for thirty plus years. Yeah. You, I mean, when you hear her voice, like you might even not understand what she's singing, but the notes that she hits, I dare a singer try to hit notes like that. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out. It's incredible. Uh, I wanted to applaud you too. This is this is. I don't think we should get too much into this subject because the the nature of it and the nature of this business. And I think you'll know what I'm talking about, but. I do gotta applaud you for always speaking up about what's happening in your home country, what's happening in you know between Palestine and Israel. Um, it's very touchy and entertainment specifically, let alone any 
um, industry, but you have always stood stood forward and said what's on your mind. I've seen it on your Instagram. I mean, I, I, as a you know a Palestinian person, like you know, it's our duty to spread awareness about what it is. And there's not that many of us. So between me and Bella Hadid and Anwar Hadid and and Gigi and mm -hmm. Mo Amer and you yeah. know a few well, of I mean, us out really there's a few of family. us out there. Yeah. So you know it's our duty to do that, yeah. and we're not. You know, they, the thing is, before it was like the media was kind of jaded to a, a, in a way where people were afraid to speak out. Mm -hmm. and, and honestly, like our education level of what the whole, you know, thing was about was not as, as, as educated as we wanted it to be. But now that we've learned and we've seen what's going on, people have got phones, like now you can see for yourself what's going on out yeah. there and see that it's not what they tell you that it is. You know what I mean? People are being occupied and it's an apartheid system. And, and just as being a Palestinian right away, people want to jack, put a jacket on you and say, oh, you're, a, you're an anti-Semitic. Well, I can't be anti-Semitic because I'm a Semitic person. So, you know, yeah. it's about learning the facts of what's Most going definitely. on over Most there. Definitely. And it's just about people's human rights to live and be free. That's it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And it's not about, you know, religion or anything like that, but other people have made their religion, uh, you know, the master race or whatever you want to call it. And, and my people don't stand for that. So, you know, it's, my, yeah. it's our duty to uh, spread awareness and, and, and let people know what the real story is. Absolutely. And I, I, I applaud you for that because as you, as you mentioned, like in the past and even still a little bit to me, it's something that is kind of like, Hey, sweep it under the rug. Yeah. You know, we don't want you to talk about it. We, yeah, we yeah. being the machine or the Oh yeah, you know, they, they 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 come after us here and there, mm -hmm. but you know, well, we just keep it we just keep it to the facts, you know, cuz I love everybody. Yeah. You know, I just I hate anybody that's going to hate on somebody else. Absolutely. I'm not rolling with it. You know Absolutely. what I mean? No matter who you are, what religion you are, I don't give a hell shit yeah. what religion you are. You practice what you want. Yeah. And a lot don't. of the, a lot of the Jewish people I know here in LA are on our side of thinking like what's going on there isn't humane yeah you know, for sure but, so yeah. either way fred i just had to applaud you thank you because i'm just free gonna, palestine how's that we'll leave it at that free palestine jerusalem in my heart yeah um uh, do you feel like okay it's so the last thing on that subject but i remember as a kid when i bought you know i i, I love khaled musically i always was like this this dude's a man you know his first album when you bought it and you lifted the disc it said free Palestine here. It was here or it was in the album art. Anyone can look it up. His first album was called I don't believe it. I swear to God. It All was right. called We the I'll send you a picture of it. I might have it's not necessary. Still. No, I'll but take my your point word is, for it. it. It was in the album, but then as he got bigger, I felt like he had to kind of, in order to get to where he wanted to be as a media personality as superstar he is now, I feel like he had to get mum on it, which is a bummer. And I felt like he was so torn last year. Because he was getting slammed on his Instagram. And he hey, man, he's clear. a grown man. He can choose what he wants to do, whether it's with us or against us. So he chose the other. So we can, we're can going to keep on doing what so we want to do. So you feel like he chose do. the other? Because I kind of felt that way, too, to be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's all evident in, his, in him himself. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And Gazza's being bombed and people massacred left and right. And he's on the radio talking about his album. Yeah, facts. You know, and I, we'll just leave it at that because yeah. I, I never wanted to hate on another person, another musician, or another person that comes from the same people as my people. But everybody knows whose side everybody's on. So, you know, absolutely, we don't need him. Nah, I, there's a lot of other. I, we need no we need we need regular people to, to 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 stand by us. Yeah, you know, we need white people and 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 other people to stand by us. Yeah. So you know, absolutely, man. But. Back to Fred Reck and his music, man. Sorry, I didn't mean to, you know, we were going over favorite all good. Jerusalem in my heart. Back to you and your music, man. You've had more than a, le to say you had a legendary career would be like, that'd be me talking about the first like 10 years of your career. But early on, did you live with Exhibit? Was he your roommate? Yeah, me and Exhibit were roommates, yeah. You were roommates where? Here in LA? In the Valley, yeah. In the Valley? Yeah. And was it, this was before Exhibit really popped, right? It was like right before he got his album deal, yeah. So, did so, you have any involvement in that? Oh, sorry. Go no, ahead. I didn't. But Exhibit, um, see, I, we used to do the wake-up show, and then on the wake-up show, we used to get on the radio and be like, yo, anybody that wants to come and do a freestyle, come to the gate on Yucca Street. So, all these MCs would come out to the gate, 
And then me and Sway would go out there and listen to him. And then one time Exhibit came out there with Razkaz, and Razkaz started rapping at the gate. We're like, oh yeah, you're dope, come on in. And then he was like, yo, my man's with me. We're like, nah, just you. He's like, but he's my ride. So we let him in and it was Exhibit. But Exhibit didn't rap that night. Okay. Then what I used to do is I used to get all these guys' numbers and then I'd have them come by my house like during the weekend and I'd put some beats up and we'd do like promos for our show where they rap about the wake up show. Oh. So that's how I met Exhibit. He came and he started writing some bars and then when he heard, when I heard his voice, I was like, oh man, this dude is dope. Yeah. Like his voice was, like, I like Razkaz's flow and his words were really good, but Exhibit had a voice. Yeah, like yeah, he had yeah. that ground, you know, you know, so I was like, so me and him became friends and we started recording and doing stuff together. And then, and then uh, he got thrown out of his house by his baby mama and I was like, yo, come stay with me. And then we, that, and then he got his record deal. And actually because of Exhibit living with me is how I met Snoop because Superfly was producing Exhibit's record and he used to come by our house. And Superfly produced like, you know, Dog Pound. Uh, he, yeah. he played on a bunch of Snoop stuff. He was, he's an amazing musician, writer. And he, um, I had my little studio in the back of the house and he came back to like, yo, those beats are dope. I was like, yo man, here's a beat CD. Like I gave it to him. And then like a week later, he called me up and was like, yo, come down to the studio. Somebody wants to get on your beats. And then when I went to the studio, it was uh, represent that GC. And then it was Snoop, Nate Dogg, uh, Corrupt, Daz, wow. Butch Cassidy, and they were all in there writing to my beats. So that's how wow. I met, met um, you know, Snoop and them. So from you, from exhibit. and that came from you doing the contest on the radio and yeah. letting Raz Cass bring his homie in. Yeah. So that that one decision, or just that moment, it spiraled, snowballed. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. Uh, when I read that shit, I'm like, this guy's still living. And then once, and then once Exhibit got his deal, like I was DJing for him on the road, so we were on tour mm -hmm. together. Yeah, we were traveling. We was yeah. So that's what. Okay. So that answered what was going to be my next question: Is how the hell did my Palestinian brother here become a West Coast pioneer? Like, how did you break in the doors of Snoop and Dre? But that's, I imagine that's... That's how I got in with Snoop. Dre was a whole nother thing, but Snoop, is, that's how I met Snoop. That day at the studio when Superfly called me, Snoop, you know, it's Superfly was, Superfly was never a hater. He was like, yo, I got this guy. He makes beats. He's yeah. dope. You know what I'm saying? That's really dope. And, I, yeah, and, I, and I, he's my brother to this day because of that. Like, I'll never forget what he did for me. Like, most guys be like, let me just get your beat and I'm going to put my name on it or exactly, something. Exactly. And, you know, I probably would have did that back then. Yeah, absolutely. But he let me produce it. He let me mix it. He let me do my own shit. And then Snoop was like, you know, hey, you, you made this beat? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you got some more beats? I was like, hell yeah. I got it. That's all I used to do, sit in my apartment and make beats all day. Yeah. He's like, man, here's my address. Come up to my house on the weekend. And you bring got some Snoop's beats up there. Now, well. And I went up there, and me and him was been friends ever since. Wow, wow. No, literally, I haven't seen... I mean, Snoop's not the type to come out and, like, shit on someone he doesn't speak to anymore, but I haven't seen you have any riff or anything. Like you said, you're doing shows on Martha Stewart with him. Oh, but, no, there's no... Re how, could you have, how could you have a problem with Snoop? Like, yeah. he's Snoop. True, true. One um, thing about Snoop, though, is he's really... Um, he's a really good people and communic communicative person. You know what I'm saying? Like... He's good to tell you straight up what it is. So you ain't never gonna have no problem with him. You know what I mean? I don't ever talk business with him, ever. I just keep it all creative with him. You know what I mean? So if there's ever a problem with something, or it's like, he's gonna just nip it in the bud. We're, we're always gonna have a really open communi communication with each other. And so when you say you keep it only creative though, do you mean you just, cause I feel like someone like Snoop gets bugged all day. Meaning like, yo, Snoop, I got this. Yo, we can make some money together. Yo, Snoop, yeah, we can make some oh, money together. all day. You, oh, they hit me up all day about, all hey, man, shit. hey, I got this thing for Snoop, man. It's Snoop Dogs. Hot dogs? We're going to have this new Snoop Dog. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. I don't cool. even know Snoop well. Through Dash, I have like a couple pictures with, with you know, Unc, Dog, whatever. And uh, I, I'll get those calls every like three, four months. Hey, man, can you get me in touch with Snoop? I'm like, who the fuck do you think I'm going to get you in touch with Snoop Dogg? Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine the people no, you yeah, do yeah. Um, I, I stay out of that, man. Good, man. Well, you, you, to me, you have the career path I think I would advise all musicians to have is be a producer, be, be behind the scenes, collect your royalties, yeah. get your publishing, but don't have to deal with the bullshit fame. You know? Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to take care of business too, but I always tell everybody, don't do this for the business part or the money, you know, because this is a tough business to be in for yeah. money. You have to just do it because you love it and that's mm -hmm. it. And thankfully, thankfully for me, I've always 
use that mantra. Like, I've always just done it because I love it. And whenever I do a record for Snoop, I don't ask him how much I'm getting paid. Sometimes he pays me, sometimes he don't. Just depending on what it is. But he always going to look out for me no matter what. That's yeah. what. And I don't have to ever, like, question that. Mm-hmm. When he calls me to, hey, I need you to do this Christmas song for me. I'm there. I'm doing a Christmas song for you. Hey, I, I'm working on my new album. I need some beats. I send them to him. Hey, I need you. I got this artist I'm working on. I need you to help me with it. I go over there and help him with it. I never ask about money because for me, it's I love working with him and I love him and his fa- whole family, and creatively to be and musically, he pretty much lets me be me, and and that's something also that you can't really get being with working with other artists. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nowadays, it's not like before where the producer was the person telling the artist what to do. Now the now the artists are like. Oh, yeah, you bring your beat in, lay it down, I'm going to do whatever I want. Well, I don't come from that school. I don't work like that. Yeah, so you there, know? there has been that shift, right? Because I feel Absolutely. like albums used to be always dictated by a producer. Absolutely. That's what the producer is, you know. I'm Every- recording your vocals. I'm making sure you're doing it right. I'm making sure you're cutting it the way I feel like it's going to make it better for you. It's not about me. I'm making it for you and for your record company. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I got a job to turn it into the record company. Then it's got to be, I got to take that. The, the best takes from you yeah. and make it good, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like every classic, damn near every hip hop classic, 95% of them, not 99, are have one unified producer or production team. I mean, those are my favorite records. Yeah. Pretty like much. You, you know, there's the, there's some there's a couple here and there. Yeah, you get the good are kid mixed, Mad but cities or you know, even games first album was all Dre. I was thinking back to his second album. But like Goody Mob, Outcast, Organized Noise, everything Dre touch, right? It just, I think it makes it more of like when you have records that are produced by one producer, those records be, are more like leg- become more legacy records because it's like the whole sound is one thing. But nowadays, like record companies and even artists are like, oh, I need a beat from Dre. I need a beat from Hit Boy. I need a beat from this dude. And I need to get a cameo from this person and a cameo from that person. They're just trying to name load their record without having a consistent yeah. sound to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that it's, if you just, I think records become more legacy records if one person's vision, with the artist, of course, is the sound of what it is. I agree. Know. I agree. If you go back to Michael Jackson's work, that was always the way he worked until Invincible. No, I love Invincible, but like Invincible is not dangerous, off the wall, bad, thriller. Every single one of those albums had either one or two men, at most two people. At most, it was Rod Temperton and Quincy Jones. Well, it was Quincy Jones. Yeah, yeah. And Rod Temperton just wrote the songs, just like. Oh, he didn't do any production. No, I thought he did a little production. Nah, he didn't oh, produce so nothing. He, only he just penned. penned the songs and wrote the songs. So there we go. Yeah. And you know, and that's a long, but, but some of them songs Michael had already. Oh, and yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. if you ever see uh, interviews with Quincy, Quincy says, "Yeah, he had the songs. They were right here." But who's going to take him to be up here? Absolutely. And that was him. He was a person that was, and you can hear it. When you hear the demos of those songs, you're like, yeah, that was a good song. But when you hear the demo of uh, Thriller, you understand why it was Thriller. Because it wasn't Thriller first. It was Starlight. Rod Temberton wrote a song called Starlight. Starlight, Starlight. And Quincy, go listen to it. It's on YouTube. And Quincy heard it was like, yeah, that's cool. But I don't know. The words aren't that good. And then you got to go write the words over. He liked the melodies and everything. And then Rod Temperton on his way out leaving Westlake, seen Michael Jackson in the, in the lounge watching Bella Lugosi. He liked watching the vampire movies, some old Bella Lugosi with Vincent Price and you know, all that stuff. So he would, I made him, he's like, you know what, let me write a vampire song. I like a, like a let me write Thriller instead of, and that's when he it wrote Thriller. But it took, it took the producer to make, to be like, mm, that's cool, but that ain't it. Absolutely, and, and that would have flopped. I'm sorry, but Starlight. It might have been cool. It, it might have be, been cool, like a cool disco song, yeah. but it wasn't like what it was. And then to think that they got Vincent Prince to come and do the vocals and be in the video. Quincy Jones. Crazy man. So yeah, back to what you're saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're able to get that out there because I always tell artists like, hey, you should really like lock in with, with the producer and, and create a body of work. Yeah. And see see how that sounds. Yeah. To still to this day, most of the projects that I really adore. The ones that do the best to me have that continuity, like it's whether it's Alchemist doing a whole project with yeah, Gibbs, exactly currency, you know. So, right. I, I I really hope we get we get back towards that where the the powers in the producers' hands. Um, but speaking of producing, speaking of developing artists, and what has Fred been working on? Because I know you work on a lot behind the scenes, but what it, besides the Dre and the Snoop stuff, 
What's Fred working on for Fred? I'm uh, like I've working been working on this artist named Minnie Murda. So she's like somebody that I've been in between that stuff going in the studio with, and I've been working on this record with her and this other producer uh, named Beatnik D. So we've been doing this record with her. She, her name is Jen M. That's her like singing name, but we, we're working on a project called Mini Murder with her. And she got, uh, we just did a song. It's in the Jamie Foxx and Snoop movie. And Snoop just released another song of hers on the death row. What part of the movie was it on? I just watched it two nights ago. It's like, you know, it's one of the scenes when they're in an apartment talking. It's on the radio. In okay, the background, okay, so. okay. And it's uh, her. She's an incredible writer, incredible artist. She's really great to work with. And um, that's really what I've been working on as far as independent artists. Okay. And it's not rap. It's she's like singing. She's kind of like. I can't even. Ex you just gotta listen to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We'll so play. We'll play it. Let, let everybody. Mini murder is the name of the group, or like. Mini murder is her. Re re really, mini murder is the name of her record that all three of us did together. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? And it, you know, I'm sure that she's gonna. That I, I'm the the. The name has been is so sticking to her right now because she's been fe getting her features on other people's records, mm -hmm. and I've just been telling her, "Yo, just put featuring Mini Murder," and pre I, I'm at some point it's just gonna have to be her name. I like it. I like it. It's M I N I, like Mini. M I like Mini, like Mini Mouse, because she's kind of little. Uh huh. Okay. And Murder, because all her songs are kind of like dark and about you know killing her boyfriend and you know oh shit it's dope so I'm murder but like not this. murder so we just said murder, murder mini right. murder yeah murder. okay now you mentioned you said it's her singing yeah the first thing that caught me off guard because just off the name mini murder i'm like oh this is a rapping ass rapper you know but if it's fred production but you said you're working with another producer too yeah um, I'm gonna assume she's gonna sound like a young Mary, like a, like that early Mary J. Blige, where it's kind of like hip hop beats. It's um, you gotta just play and listen to it, man. You know, okay. it, it, her stuff like the, the 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 Bang Bang song that's in the movie. That's one that's a little bit more poppy than the other ones, but it's like kind of it's more of like a retro feel. Okay. So we're trying to I was trying to get, you know challenge myself as a musician and play as many of the instruments on there as I can. And you know, I have other musicians that come in and play horns and stuff like that. And then uh, we just kind of just been uh, making it try to sound real retro. Mm, you got me at retro, bro. I listen to Tears for Fears every morning. I listen to all these all the time. It's a little bit jazzy, some of it's jazz. It's like a little bit, of, it's kind of like maybe a little Amy Winehouse-ish a little bit, a little okay. bit, but, 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 but dark, you know what oh, I'm saying? Okay. And then Mini Murder is kind of like her Slim Shady. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Eminem is Eminem, and then he's got Slim, Slim Shady. Shady. So yeah. that's what she is. Mini Murder is Jen M's Slim kinda Shady. Kind of like deep, dark Yeah, the persona. dark. Yeah, she's like wants to dig. She wants to get a shovel and dig a hole because she needs a graveyard. Uh, she just wants to kill she got all, bodies to throw all the men yeah. in her life. But okay. she's singing it, so it's dope. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. I can't wait to hear it. We're going to make sure we're playing it on Dash, too. Okay, so cool. So anybody who hasn't heard Mini Murder, if you're watching this, tune in to Dash Discover. I want to say it'll be on Dash R&BX. We'll have to see. You know what I mean? The yeah. It's like R&B pop, probably. You know? okay. Some of it is really R&B-ish. Some of it is jazzy. Some of it's and is this an artist you're like fully invested to in the yeah this is like, like i'm like only i'm right now as far as independent artists i'm only messing with her because oh, wow. i don't re i don't have time really yeah. but and i believe in her so much that and she's been getting on all our records she's on the first mount westmore song with ice cube snoop Ooh. ice cube snoop too short and e40 she's got on the first song of that she got a song on e40's record she got a song on somebody else's records that i can't really say uh and yeah, she's doing a lot of stuff, man. She's really good. She's a, a fabulous artist. I'm excited to hear that, man. If if Fred Rec puts his stamp on it, you know. Yes, sir. Uh, and I haven't. Never, this is probably one of my first artists that I've actually worked on as my own artist. I have never, and I'm a hip hop historian. I dug so deep, I found this for you. I have never seen you ever say, "Hey, I'm Fred Rec, and this is an artist." I'm, Never. I, ne I, I never have because I never I, I didn't never wanted to deal with it mm. like if I have started to work with an artist then they, you know either they start asking you for money or they don't show up to the studio on time or I don't feel like they're putting as much effort in it that I'm doing it I'm like man I don't have time for this I just like to go to the studio I can go work with Snoop for a couple of days and go home I don't have to hear it from them for every day and have to deal with them and with her it's been nothing but great vibes and we but what, what, what changed, like, what was different about Mini Murder? Because you've been in the game for 20 years now, I can say, right? 
20 years strong. Almost. About 30 years, yeah. 30? Yeah. I'm doing my math wrong. Yeah, yeah, Me yeah. too. You just got making me feel old. Yeah. Nah, man, I got more gray hairs <laughs> than you. But what about Minnie, or what's her name again, her actual name? Jan M. Jan M. What yeah. about Jan M, Minnie Murda said, you know what? I want to get behind this project and invest time and energy and effort into At it. At first, I just used to bring her around just like to sing, to write, like write hooks on some of my beats so I could send my beats out to let, you know, whoever hear them. Yeah, to get them placed. And then she, then she would just like be sending me like songs, like she plays the piano, so she'll send me songs on her phone, like a, on my phone, like, like, you know, just press and record. I'm like, wow, this is this song is freaking incredible. So I'd go in there and produce it, like make a, a beat to it, and then I have her come in and sing, sing it. And it kind of just started like that. She'd come in and sing some hooks on something, but then she'd be like, hey, I got this song idea. And she'd play it for me. I'm like, oh, that shit's pretty dope. So then we start recording it. And then I got a, uh, and then I have another guy that's kind of like that, beat Nick D. He's a friend of mine. He's an up and coming producer. And he's like, you know, he, he'll send me some beat ideas. I'm like, yo, those are some cool beats. Send them to her. Why don't you guys get together and write some stuff together? And this way, they, it's like both of them are developing their skills with each other, too. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So then, you know, then I, so we just kind of all worked on it together where, you know, they were coming with song ideas. I'd give her, she'd give me an idea, I'd do a song to it. And then it was just, it just made it fun and easier and everything was cool. And, and we've, been, we've been doing it for probably a couple years now. Oh, dope. You guys have. We've been working on song, and now stuff's starting to come out out of all that stuff that we've been doing. Stuff's starting oh, okay, to trickle out okay. now. So now it's time to uh, introduce the world. To yeah, Minnie, now like Minnie she got Minnie a song out. on the Jamie Foxx movie. She got a song coming out on this record, on that record. Okay. Snoop just put a song of hers out on a Death Row record. So so now the name's starting to pop yeah, up. Yeah, so now we're you know now you're getting to hear the fruits of our labor. Basically. And does it feel like a, is it is it is it like a new exciting feeling? For you, I imagine. Yeah, it's it's really dope because it's like it's like all it's all mine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like if I do a song for Dre or Snoop, that's like it's the song for them. But this is like my project that I'm doing, and I'm coming up with ideas for the artwork with them. And I'm like, yo, okay, I gotta get a video done. And like, so now I'm having to do things that I never really did before that a record label would do. Yeah. So yeah. it makes it fun because it's all creative anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I imagine. You've been through, man. You've had so many, just so many monumental moments in your career, and I imagine this is just refreshing to kind of build something from scratch. And it is. It's refreshing, and she's easy to work with. She has great song ideas. She sings good when she comes in. She's very coachable, and like, and it's just a collaborative effort. You know what I mean? Yep. She's not signed to me. I have no contract with her. None of that. I love that. We're just like, yo, let's just work on something yeah. together. If you blow up. It, who blew you up? Exactly. You don't want to come back and work with me again. If exactly. not, then why am I going to hold you to a contract and some bullshit like I ain't trying to beat Taylor Swift nobody? Yeah, I like that. You know, it doesn't work like that anymore. Like so, it's like yeah. let's just work on some music together and, and 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 be a team. And I think that I haven't heard the records yet, but I imagine that energy translates on the songs. You guys are probably all had just such good moods where you're making Yeah, because everybody's not like tripping about something. Oh, I got a contract with him yeah. and I'm not getting paid as much as he's getting paid. We don't got that problem because I don't got a problem with money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I want the artists that I work with to be happy. Yeah, so yeah. let's just split it up. You bringing in your talent, I'm bringing in my talent. And whatever the bills are, we've been taking care of it all together. Yeah. So that leaves everything out the way. Now we can just be creative. Absolutely. Well, you know this is I mean? exciting for you, man. You've done, I mean, you get to work with Eminem. You're, this motherfucker was with Snoop yesterday, you said, right? Yeah. You will be with Eminem tomorrow, right? I can't tell you that. I'm playing. <laughs> you, but you will be like, I, you know, I'm saying theoretically, you know what I mean? You could be with Dre tomorrow. You could be yeah, with yeah, Eminem yeah. tomorrow. You could be with, and, well, I'm going to That's the gang. Five. That's so the gang. He was with Snoop yesterday, my it's one today, yeah. and, you know, Dre or M tomorrow. Yeah. But I think it might be so refreshing for you to take on this different kind of challenge out of the spotlight, completely in the shadows, build it up. Yeah, something new, um, yeah. But back to the, the, the spotlight and these names, you got to give me one. What's, what, what's to you the most memorable studio session that you've been in, where you looked around, because you've been in all of them, but you were like, oh, shit, if people knew who was in this room right now. I mean, there's been a few. Like, I'm, like I told you, my very first session with Snoop, that's one of my most memorable, because I got like a... I got like all my heroes in one room that day. Mm. So it was like Snoop, Daz, Corrupt. Uh, that was for Represent That GC. 
um, Nate Dogg, Butch Cassidy, J.O. Felony. Uh, um, I know I'm missing some people. There, everybody was there in that room that day. RBX, they were all there, you know. So, and that was pretty cool. And then now, like with working with Dre and and working with Snoop, like you get to work with, you know, you get to do stuff with some of your heroes. Like I got to work with the Doors. Not Jim Morrison, but the other doors. You know, I got to work with them and be friends with them for Snoop. We did some stuff. And so that was really, I mean, like, those are my heroes. Like, the doors? Like, who yeah. gets to say they work with the doors? Like, you can say you work with any rapper, but I got to work with the doors, and that was cool. Um, there's just been random stuff. Like, like be we had Isley brothers. brothers come over and do some stuff with us a couple months ago, and that was really cool. Like, yeah. I, like the, I like the old school Absolutely. guys more. You know what I mean? Like, when somebody old school, like... Ron Isley comes in, it's like, whoa, that's Mr. Big. Like, yeah. that's what I like. You know, the people some people don't even know what, who he is, but Absolutely. for me, that's what I grew up listening to. I'm a fan of that music. Like, okay. Because you know? I, was, I was thinking you were going to be like, we were in the studio one night with Future, Mariah Carey, and like Elton John. You know what I mean? Just a crazy, weird, like, Nah, thing. nah. Okay. Do you have nothing. any, were you around when Dre was working on, before Get Rich or Die Trying, when he was working on Detox? Yes. Okay, is my theory I correct? On okay, so I didn't think this is a, a theory. Isn't it true that Dre essentially, in the process of making Detox, said, "You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 50 Cent instead," and gave like basically most of the tracks on Get Rich or Die Trying, uh, documentary, and Beg for Mercy weren't those Detox tracks? No. 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 That's what no. I heard. That like so. This those is were like, songs from those beats were made after. I so none of those were from the because I, I don't know about none of them, but I think Detox was pretty much that was and that was way later too. That was really? a couple of years later. That it was later. Okay. And most a lot of that stuff was Eminem's. Work. Those were Eminem beats. Yeah, like uh, like a lot of the first album that was Eminem doing that stuff. The Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah, Get Rich or Die Trying was a lot of M. That was uh, Fifty was M's project, and then Dre did like I don't know three or four on that. He didn't do the wow. whole record. He did get he did. Uh, in the club, which was a D12 song that they didn't use. <laughs> like D12, uh, like didn't want to use a beat. I don't remember what the situation was. But, wow. Um, and uh, yeah. So that was like a that was M's project, really. You know. What okay, I mean? I'm glad I cleared that up because for years now, what I had been under the assumption was I don't know where I read this, but Dre basically was like, you know what, I'm not gonna do detox. So let me give this great body of work. Here you go, 50. Here, game. I got this. Pretty much album made, just rap over it. I mean, the first, oh, D, you're saying detox? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I, I mean, every beat that Dre makes, people are like, oh, that could, that was supposed to be for detox, hey. you know what I mean? But he's always making beats, so I, I, okay. I, I don't know whether, whether he was actually going to use it for that or not. But, okay, that was what my I was thinking the was. Chronic 2000. Got right? it. No, I was thinking detox because there was a good four years where Dre, Produced some of the most classic hip hop projects from my childhood, which was Get Rich or I Try and Beg for Mercy, right. Documentary. Right, right. They all came in such a short span of time. Right. And it was almost like Dre had been sitting on like a thousand just. He's always sitting beats. on a b thousand beats. You know, that's just what he does. He makes beats. Okay. okay. You know? So. And, you, you know, he'll hold on to stuff and he'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? This might be good for this project. Let's, let's, let, let's yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sometimes he'll make something and he'll give it to somebody and it just doesn't work out. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, of course, you know, you know, I, I recently, I'm a big fan of uh, Truth Hurts, Addictive. You yeah. Remember that song? Yeah, of course. Truth Hurts is my sis. Right? So, oh, this might hurt that. I didn't want to say. I was going to say her, her album finally came out on Spotify, and I was underwhelmed, I guess is the right way to put it. I'd never heard the full body of work. I think it was called Hollywood or something, the project. I'm trying to remember. Anyway, I was like, oh, my God, it's going to be like 18 Addictives, you know? <laughs> Bless you. Well, Addictive um, was, that was DJ Quick made that DJ song. DJ Quick did that, yeah. And I think there's record, the record got sued because of the Indian sample yeah. in it, so the whole thing got frozen up, and I don't know what the rest of it sounded like. I don't remember. It's, I don't remember. it's out on Spotify now. It's okay. It's not bad, but it's not what Addictive was. Addictive was a heavy dance record. Yeah, that was you know bang, that I mean? shit's still banging. Still. I, st I still play it if I DJ I'm somewhere. getting engaged on Saturday. I texted the DJ five songs. You know one of them was Addictive. Yeah, um, so anyway, but I know what you mean where it's like if, if Dre, my point was like if Dre, Dre's not going to put it out unless it's like polished, you know, um, that was a time where something didn't come out. But 
I heard, I heard on the web, and now this is my last question for you, Dre and Snoop. Is it true? Do we got some Snoop and some Dre coming? The, the only reason why I'm going to say anything is because the cat's already out the bag, but I'm not going to tell you too much. But Snoop got an incredible body of work coming out. Now, I'll just leave it at that. I don't okay. want drones because Dre got drones and shit flying <laughs> around and snipers on them t- up there. So, yeah. All right, man. Well, it's already, you know, I've heard, I've heard people talk about it already and kind of everybody kind of knows, but let's just leave it at that. Leave it as much as a surprise as anything. Okay. Well, I'm very you, excited. But man. people won't be disappointed. That's, let's just say that. Snoop's never Whatever disappointed. Whatever it is. Snoop's never disappointed. Right. Can I give you a hot take? Snoop's best album is Blue Cartman treatment really i love Blue everybody's Cartman got a favorite treatment. everyone's got a favorite me and my coworker upstairs always say it's better than doggy style doggy style had better records like in two or three of the doggy style records are better than anything on blue Cartman, probably but fuck blue carpet treatment was so good so i know snoop always comes through yeah snoop I've does never come blue carpet it. is a classic for sure kool-aid i listen to kool-aid snoop i, I listen to every snoop album because he d- he put so much into it yeah bush he, Snoop did a funk album with Pharrell that a lot of people forgot about. It's like eight, nine, just straight funk songs. Like yeah. The fucking George Clinton days, you know? Yeah. So if Snoop's, if Snoop's doing it, I'm listening. Yeah, Snoop is, Snoop's great, man. Yeah, well, Fred <laughs> Reck, thank you so much. This is DJ Fred Reck. Do, do people still say DJ? I haven't seen DJ. Hey, once in a while they throw it up there, but it's cool, man. DJ okay. Fred when Reck. When I was introduced good. to you, you were DJ Fred Reck yeah, at the time. Probably. Um, Fred Reck, thank you so much, bro. Thank, thank you, you so much. Everything you've done in the game, I, I could do this for 10 hours just giving you flowers. It's all good. Thank Anybody you, who doesn't know who Fred Reck is, that is by fucking design. Leave the man alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. You could have done a hundred press runs in your career. Yeah. Paid a bunch of publicity people. You know what I mean? Is that what they do? A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. And you, you've always been like, nah, I'm cool with the Grammys. Yeah, nah, that's cool. Have you got a Grammy yet? Yeah, I got one with Anderson Pack. yeah. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Yeah. This, man, this game's so fucked up. It took till your Anderson work. You should yeah. have been at it. Me, Grammy. Anderson, and Smokey Robinson. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, man. I love Anderson, man. So I can say it then. We had Grammy Award winning yes, sir. super producer, DJ, uh, engineer, just everything, man. Thank you, Executive man. Fred Reck, thank you so much. Shout out Feyru, Snoop right. Dogg, Dre, M, everybody. Thank you so much. All man. right, Mini Murder will be out soon. Mini Murder. Yep, yep, we out. Boom.